Anybody with a ThingLink account has a few sharing options. If you have a teacher account, you have a couple of other options that can involve students. But uh, if you look on your page with your images, some of them you'll see have little uh, locks on them, and that means that they are not shared with everybody. So if you go to an image when you edit it, you can go to Sharing Settings, and you can make it public or unlisted. You can also allow people to edit it. And you can have some combination of those. So uh, the reason you would want something unlisted is only if your class wants to access it or on mine I have some that are part of a bigger project and I don't want somebody just jumping into step nine with uh, uh, without seeing the rest of it. So I want them to have to find it through the beginning. Now, if you have content like this one that you wanted people to be able to remix, it doesn't show up as anything special when you look at it, but if somebody who is not logged in accesses it, it shows the editing option there. So, not logged in, but they can still go in, and they can make edits on it just the same as you could. And they're also able to add the comments. So again, if other people are editing it, especially if they're not logged in, there's no way to see who did something. So that would be something where uh, you may want it unlisted if it's going to be for your classroom use. So the general public won't stumble upon it. You can also choose within the image how you want it to be shared. So this is where you can email a link to people or post it somewhere. You can embed it into a website or you can share it with any of these social media tools. Now another way to look at organizing these is with a channel. And so, like that example where I had a bunch of images all scattered through here, if I want to do something with these, it's hard for me to find them. So maybe I want to put them in a channel. And now I can go through it's a little tedious, I have to do it separately, but I can go through my images, I can tell it to add to the channel, I can pick that channel, and it will be there. Not as streamlined as it could be, but it's better than nothing. And at least you have a way to bundle things together for your students or for yourself. Now the other thing with being a teacher is you have the ability to add students. Some of your students may already have accounts and so uh, you can just add them. Some of your students may not have accounts and so if you don't want them to have to use an email account to set up a thing link and they're only using it for your course, you could put in some names and you can click on it to register the students. And when you tell it to register, uh, this is the next page that comes up, which you need to make sure, because it's in red in all caps, you need to make sure you write this information down for your students. This is the ID they'll use to log in, and this is the password. But we can return to the group management. And let's look at our group. So we have the master, which is me. Uh, we can remove any students that we want to if they are no longer in your course. Uh, if students already have a ThingLink account, you can email them to invite them to your group. Now with this, you're only able to make one student group, and so that's where the channels could come in. So making a channel for each separate section of your class might be what you want to do. So they give you a few options for managing sharing in general with the public, managing your students, and giving you some options for how you can get them to the content that they need to get to.